this time on Goss's Garage, we're going to do the first segment in a class that I have taught for years to consumers. And that class goes through all of the typical things where technicians make mistakes and things where there are a lot of myths and stuff like that. So it'll be broken down into various segments, so you'll want to come back and visit us each week to see what we're talking about in that particular week's segment. Now we're going to start out with the battery in the vehicle. Now why do we start with the battery? Well, everything electrical on the car begins and ends at the battery. You see, it powers everything. And a weak battery, even though it's starting the car all right, a weak battery can lead to all kinds of problems. Now, there are lots of things that you can see or you can tell uh, where you would want to check the battery. So even if it isn't an electrical problem, you want to check the battery as the first step in your procedure to do a diagnosis. Now, let's say we have a performance problem. We want to check the battery first. Now, the reason for that is, is because all of the stuff on the car that controls performance, well, all of that stuff, computers and everything, it's all controlled by the battery. So a bad or weak battery can cause performance problems. Fuel economy, your fuel economy drops, first thing you do, check the battery. Because again, all of the electronics that affect uh, fuel economy, all of those things are controlled by the battery. Check engine lights. Well, check engine light, a lot of those can be traced back to a battery problem. And the reason is that just like the uh, home computer, you know, you got your PC or uh, your laptop, this computer on the car is very similar works in the same way and so on. And what's one of the things that we do with our home computers or our laptops? We try to power them with a stabilized power source, battery backup. We have to do away with surges and things like that. Well, a bad battery can cause surges in the power supply in your car's computers. And remember that most cars these days have anywhere from 10 to 20 computers in them. Some of them are control, uh, called modules, but they're still, in essence, a computer. So, we look at that. So, check engine light, first thing you do, test the battery. Slow turn signals, you're sitting at the traffic light, got your headlights on, and as you're hit, sitting there, what happens? Well you don't really pay attention to it because the turn signals are down there and you're thinking about other things and all of a sudden you step on the gas when the traffic light turns green and you start to go and all of a sudden you realize that your turn signals had essentially stopped while you were sitting still and now they're back to flashing at a normal rate as soon as you stepped on the gas. First thing you check, battery sitting at the traffic light again. Headlights are on. And as you sit there, the headlights and the dash lights and everything, they get dimmer and dimmer. Again, you don't notice until you hit the accelerator. You hit the accelerator and all of a sudden everything gets bright. What do you check? You check the battery. So all of this stuff can happen as the result of a weak battery. And there's a lot of other things too. But anything electrical, even down to a blown fuse, it can be caused or affected by a weak battery. So the first thing you're going to do is perform a test on the battery. Now, here's where you might get into trouble. You go to some half-baked shop and the technician comes out with one of these critters. Now, this is... It's a resistance tester that, 
well, it doesn't do much of anything. It's okay for a technician to have in the toolbox to go out into the parking lot when you have a car that's towed in and you can hook this up and you can see if the battery is capable of starting the car. But as far as telling whether the battery is really good or bad, I don't care what this tells you. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of good information. So if you go to get your battery tested and they come out with one of these things, walk away because you may buy a battery that you don't need or you may not uh, wind up with a proper test of the battery so you actually have a bad battery and then uh, it's declared good and that means that you go on about doing the check engine light test and a bunch of things like that and you spend a lot of money that you don't need. The battery test has to be accurate. Now accurate typically well, it's going to mean that there is going to be a computerized unit. Now, this fits into a, uh, a console that we wheel to the car. And this does an electronic test of the battery. So you're looking for something like this that uh, it's going to do a number of things. It's going to electronically test the battery. It's going to give you a printout. It's going to show you where the faults are and stuff like that. That gives you an accurate idea as to whether or not you need a new battery. Oh, and by the way, uh, and I don't, uh, I don't have one here, or do I? Yes, I do. Battery tester. Oh my goodness. Here is something that tests the electrolyte in the battery. So what do you do? You pull the uh, caps off of the battery. You go in and the technician starts prying caps off of the battery and stuff like that. And then draws some of the electrolyte up out of the battery. And what you wind up with is this thing floats in here and it tells you stuff. Okay, that's good in conjunction with uh, a legitimate test. But keep in mind that there are some faults here. Uh, number one, this may not be the most accurate way to test a battery because all it's doing is looking at the state of charge of the battery or the condition of the electrolyte, the acid in the battery, where this electronic unit is going to look at how the battery functions electrically, internally. So if this is the only thing that they come out with, I would go to some place that has a better tester. Now, the other thing that happens with the hydrometer, which is what this is called, is that in many cases, these batteries are essentially sealed. So one of the things that may happen, if you pry this off, you may break a seal inside because it'll tell you right on top that these are not to be opened. So your technician comes out, starts prying these caps off, breaks the seal internally. Once the seal is broken, goodbye warranty, got a problem, battery's bad, no warranty because some idiot is uh, destroying seals on the battery and stuff like that. So again, not the best way to go. So these are the basics that we start with. Here are the problems, performance, fuel economy, check engine light, slow turn signals, dimming headlights, any problem that is electrical in nature, you start with a proper battery test. Next time on Goss's Garage, we're going to talk about what you do when you find that you have a bad battery. And if you have a question, a comment, or just want a lot of great information, check us out at goss-garage.com.